Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, zeros of a function here today and then uh, also next time. Uh, <clears throat> what do I mean by zeros of a function? Remember, zeros of a function are the x values that do what? Basically, that make the function value f of x uh, usually our notation of choice, but <clears throat> it's the values of x that make f of x equal 0. So, for example, if I have f of x equal uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3, <clears throat> what are the zeros of that? Well, the zeros of that are what make f of x be 0. So the way we did it in the past is we just said f of x equals 0, and then factor uh, usually the x minus 3, x plus 1, wouldn't it? <clears throat> then set each individual to 0. Here we'd add 3. There we would subtract 1. So my zeros are 3 and negative 1. Okay? Well, <clears throat> let me uh, rewrite this for purposes uh, where I'm going with this. Um, if I rewrite this f of x function, I can write it in its factored form x plus 3, x minus 1. And then we saw that the zeros were 3 and negative 1. Okay. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> because here's what we're going to do, second, uh, second one here. Say we've got f of x equals, and this one's actually going, already going to be factored out. Say we've got x uh, minus 2, x minus 6, and x plus 8. What are your zeros there? Two six and negative eight. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if it's already factored out, I mean these are are pretty simple. I mean what we're doing there. How do we get? Why is it two out of x minus two? Well, the reason it's two is because the zero we're going to set x minus two to zero, right? And so we're going to add two, and that's going to give us x equals two. But here we're going to add six. Here we're going to subtract eight when we set it to zero. So yeah, there's a definite linkage here between the factor and the zero. Okay? So to kind of generalize that, if let's say I have x minus c, just c being some number, if x minus c is a factor, then blank is a zero. If x minus c is a factor, then isn't c a, c a zero? If x minus c, just some number, is a factor, say x minus 100, or x minus 1,000. If x minus 1,000 was a factor, then wouldn't 1,000 be a zero? So yeah, if x minus c is a factor, then just c, the number here that's minus the x, that's a zero. Now, that, that pretty well covers it all, but just to point out, what if it's x plus c? What's a factor? I mean, what's a zero? Then it's negative c, yes. Okay, so that's, that's the linkage. Whatever this is, the opposite of the last of the number there, that's a zero. Okay? Now, why do I point that out? Well, I point that out because it goes the other way as well. What if, and it works in that one, it works in this one, right? Positive 3, negative 1, so it's going the opposite. The 0 is opposite sign of what the factor has. That is our point here, okay? The other point is it goes the other way as well. What if I had... <clears throat> 
to find a function with a polynomial function, I should say, with zeros of 7 and negative 4. Well, it being a polynomial function, wouldn't this mean I would have to have a factor of what? What would I have to have as a factor for 7 to be a 0? Wouldn't I have to have x minus 7 as a factor? And if minus 4, because, you know, set it to 0, move the 7 thing to get positive 7, I'm going to have to have x minus 7 be a factor. If minus 4 is going to be a 0, then what's going to be a factor? Plus. X plus 4. Okay? So if those two are the factors of the function, couldn't I say the function f of x is equal to these two factors multiplied together? Wouldn't that make sense? I think so. There you go. There's our one example. There's... There's others because you could actually multiply any number by these, like put a 2 out here or a 3, and you get a little different format. Um, now what they'll uh, do for the answer here is actually multiply this out by foiling. <clears throat> so we get f of x equals what? x squared plus 4x minus 7x <clears throat> minus 28, just foiling that out. So we get f of x equals x squared plus, excuse me, minus 3x minus 28, combined like terms. So that would be a polynomial function with the specified zeros. Okay, so it goes, it goes both ways. If you had the zeros, then you got the factors. If you got the factors, then you got the zeros. Okay, so it goes, it does go both, both ways. Okay. All right, here's uh, one more, more of those then. A couple of little other twists. All right, find a polynomial function. With zeros. Zero, two, five, and negative three. And like I said, we'll multiply uh, multiply these out. A couple others later, we won't multiply out, but these are we're going to multiply out. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so our function here is. Well, in this case, we do have a zero of zero. So what's that going to mean as far as factor goes? Because the way it works, for two, I'm going to do x minus two. For five, I'm going to do x minus five, so forth. What does it work out to be if zero is a zero? Well, technically, I guess you could say it's x minus zero. But what's even better yet? Just say x, right? Yeah, x minus zero is just x. So if zero is a zero, then just x is a factor. If uh, 2 is a 0, then x minus 2 is a factor. If 5 is a 0, then x minus 5 is a 0 of a factor. And then what about minus 3? Minus 3 is 0, then x plus 3 would be our factor. Okay. So that's the so-called factored form of this polynomial. <clears throat> Let's multiply it out. <clears throat> Do it however... Uh, however you want to choose to do. Um, let's just do it this way. We can do these, uh, let's multiply these two and multiply these two first. All right, so that would give me f of x equal, x times uh, x minus 2 would be uh, what? x, uh, distribute that in, x squared minus uh, 2x. These two multiply together, just fold those out, that would be x squared plus 3x minus 5x minus 15, which Inside that one uh, there, you can combine those, so it'd be x squared minus 2x minus 15. And so to get the final uh, multiplied out form, 
Multiply this one out, which just means multiply this one by all three of those. That would be x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 15x squared. Then do the same thing for the minus 2x. Multiply it by all three over there. So it would be minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 30x. And so the final format that they would probably have got like terms minus 4x cubed minus 11x squared plus 30x. Okay. So anyway, there you go. <clears throat> Polynomial function with those zeros. Find it that way. All right. <clears throat> Question or concern? Question. Oh, a half? Like a half? Uh, yeah, if, <clears throat> if you get a fraction, um, there, there, there are some, uh, some things, like if you have three halves as a zero. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you could always say x minus three halves, but uh, <clears throat> it might be preferred to not have fractions, so you could say, uh, if, you, if you'll notice there, you're dividing by 2, and so to do that, you'd have a 2x uh, minus 3. Put the 2 over here, okay. the bottom yeah. bottom number. Yeah. I don't think there's any where you have to do that, but if you did, you could do that. You could either do x minus 3 halves or 2x minus 3 to get the divide by 2 there. All right. All right, let's uh, <coughs> talk here about... Uh, Another thing about zeros, and that is multiplicity. Uh, if we note here, if we've got f of x equal <coughs> x squared minus 6x plus 9, if I factor that one out, I would have what? X, f of x equals x minus 3 x minus 3, wouldn't I? Wouldn't that be the factored form of x squared minus 6? Okay. <clears throat> well, what that's going to mean as far as zeros go is, what are the zeros? 3, 3. Well, 3 is the only zero, but it occurs twice. See what I'm saying? So we do have two zeros, which that, that is another point. We'll probably stress it more next time, but uh, the number of zeros should match your degree. So there, there are two zeros here, they're just the same one twice, uh, three twice, okay? Well, that's where multiplicity comes in. If you have a zero that occurs twice, you say its multiplicity is two. So multiplicity just means the number of times it is a zero. So we'd say zero, three is a zero with multiplicity of two. Or sometimes we just say three parentheses multiply multiplicity two. Okay? So the multiplicity just means it occurs more than once. Uh, I guess technically you say multiplicity of one, but <clears throat> if it occurs once, but Usually you don't see multiplicity coming up until you have a zero occurring more than once. In this case, it occurs twice. So that's, that's what we mean by uh, multiplicity. Okay? Now, <clears throat> note here, back on this uh, function here, how else could I write x minus 3, x minus 3? Couldn't I write that as x minus 3 squared? So anytime you have a... Uh, a factor with a power like that, of course, that's going to mean you've got a multiplicity of that zero. <clears throat> okay? All right, so what, uh, what about this one? Say I've got f of x 
equals x plus 6 squared, x minus 9 to the fifth, and 2x plus 5. So it's already factored for us. So what are the zeros with their multiplicities listed? Well, since this factor is easy enough here, the zeros, what's going to be the zero uh, from this one? Well, x plus 6 squared, the factor is x plus 6, so isn't that going to be negative 6, 0? And doesn't that mean it occurs twice? So there's going to be a multiplicity of 2 with negative 6. All right, what about this one? What's the 0 there? Well, it's x minus 9 is the factor, so the 0 would be positive 9. But it's the fifth power, so what does that mean? Multiplicity 5. Because that would mean there would be five copies if we wrote it all out. Five copies of x minus 9. So it's 9 occurring five times as a 0. So it's a multiplicity of 5. And then what about this one? What's the 0 there? Well, that one, you might have to look at that a little here. You need to write it out. That would mean uh, 2x plus 5 equals 0 would be the 0. A uh, solution there would be the 0. So subtract 5, divide by 2. Got negative 5 halves. So negative 5 halves is also a 0. So those are my zeros. Uh, you know, negative 5 halves just occurs once. I guess you could write multiplicity of 1 there. But usually, if it's just one occurrence, we don't write multiplicity there. OK? All right, <clears throat> so one more of these, and then we'll move uh, on to the other section here <clears throat> for today. Okay, so what, uh, what if I went the other, other way? What if I said, let's find a polynomial function with <clears throat> degree... that has zeros <clears throat> uh, 1, negative 2, and 3. We want a polynomial function with degree 4 that has zeros of 1, negative 2, and 3. <clears throat> Well, easy enough start starting with. If 1 is a 0, what's a uh, factor? The x minus 1. Yeah, it's opposite. Factor is x minus 1. If that, minus 2 is a 0, then x plus 2 is a 0. I mean a factor. And then if 3 is a 0, then x minus 3. Yeah, it goes the opposite. x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 3. However... We're not done with this one because it needs to be degree 4. What degree is this right now? That's degree 3, isn't it? Because if I multiply this out, I'm not going to multiply this one out uh, on, this, uh, on this one here. The other ones we will, but <clears throat> I am not going to multiply this out. But if I were to multiply this out, I'd eventually wind up with x times x times x be x cubed, wouldn't it? How am I going to get degree 4? That's just degree 3. Well, one of them needs to have a multiplicity, doesn't it? Multiplicity of two. Which one? Take your pick. It doesn't matter. But one of these needs to be squared, doesn't it? Without changing the zeros, I can square one of these uh, factors, <clears throat> and that would give me degree four. That would be an x squared, then an x, then an x. That'd be x to the fourth. Okay. So on those ones like that. Uh, just take your pick. It uh, matters. Uh, I mean, do the end one, do the squaring on the end one. That'd been fine too. But pick one and square it. Uh, <clears throat> so there's other other options as well. Okay, with me on that. <clears throat> 